I'm Caitlin, and I recently moved with all of my plants. Like, a lot of plants. And at this point, I am so over moving, but I'm literally an expert. So, if you clicked on this video, chances are you're probably also moving a ton of plants. Or you're just insanely bored, in which case, hit that subscribe button, because there's lots more videos where this one came from. Anyway, I recently moved about 30 minutes across town with over 100 plants, and today I'm going to share with you guys how I successfully did it, how I had as minimal of losses as possible, and how you can do the same. Additionally, two years ago, I also moved from Buffalo, New York, all the way across the country to Phoenix, Arizona. And in that process, while I didn't have as many plants back then, I still moved a fair amount of plants. So I'll also be sharing with you in this video tips on how you can move your entire plant collection across the country. We'll also start out with some general tips today because, because whether you're moving one minute down the road or a thousand miles away, I think there's a lot of overlap in this information. Now, one important thing to note before we do get started is all of my experiences with moving are moving with inside the continental US. And if you are moving between different countries or if you're in a different country right now, do note that there may be laws or regulations that are different for how you can move houseplants. And specifically, if you're moving between different countries, you will need to obtain a phytosanitary certificate to make sure that the plants that you're bringing in to your new country are not going to be bringing in any kind of nasty little bugs or be an invasive species that's going to take over the entire landscape of your new country. You nasty. But now that we got that stuff out of the way, roll the intro and we'll get right into it. Okay, so again, I am going to start out with the general moving advice that I think applies to any moving situation, no matter how far or close it is. But if you're looking to get the very, very specific tips for your move, I will put chapters down in the time bar below so you know you can skip around to where you want to go. Okay, my first tip might be an obvious one, but it's to plan out how you want to do your move. I'll just say on this most recent move that I did, I thought I was going to be able to get every single thing that I wanted done in one day, and let me tell you, it dragged out for like over a week. Now, I was fortunate enough in this scenario where the time that I had to leave my my old apartment and move into my old house actually overlap by a month so I have plenty of time but if you have a very tight window just make sure to really really map out what you want to get done on each specific day and make sure that you leave in some buffer time because inevitably things will go wrong and you don't want to be in a situation where you're staying up until 2 in the morning moving all your plants because nobody wants to do that trust me again this is one that's going to kind of come into play before you move but as you're kind of getting into the heat of moving and you have all this different stuff going on whether your plans are the first thing or the last thing you move in my case they were the last thing but i like to just kind of group all my plans together in one room at this point and kind of have them all clustered together just so that in the craziness of everything else that was happening i didn't forget about any plants that were kind of in obscure like corners of my house and i made sure to stay on top of watering all that good stuff so if you're like me and you're delaying the move of your plants until the end of your move group them together in your existing home and if they're going to be the very first thing that you move into your new home i would recommend keeping them all in one spot so that you can just keep an eye on them while you're busy with everything else because again moving is kind of a big deal now i guess this tip probably should have come before that one but whether or not you're moving all your plants together before your move inevitably during the process of the move your plants are probably going to end up like really really close together and something super important to make sure that you do ahead of time is check all of your plants really 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 thoroughly to make sure that none of them have pests on them. If you do, there's a high probability with your plants being so close together, those pests are going to jump from one plant to the other and they're going to spread throughout your entire collection and again, nobody wants that. Now unfortunately, right before moving, I noticed on my philodendron micans that it did actually have Honestly, I'm not really sure. I think they were thrips or maybe they were mealy bugs. I don't honestly know. But either way, they were chewing and mauling through my plants. And when you're looking for those pests, don't just look on the top of the leaf. Be sure to flip over the back of the leaf because for some reason, somehow, like the pests know to like hide underneath the leaf so that you don't see them. Very strange, but they do it. So yeah, just be super, super thorough. And if you want to go through with some neem oil, just spray it on, on all your plants to be extra safe. I don't think that that hurts. And yeah, it's just going to be a precautionary step. Now, I know right now there's so much craziness in the housing market and you kind of have to just act, act fast. So some people may have the luxury of doing this and some of you may not. But if you have the ability to plan ahead of when you're going to do your move, try and move during moderate weather, weather conditions. Here in Arizona, kind of the worst time to move is in the middle of the summer because it is so, so so hot like i mean like 120 degrees hot so obviously your plants aren't going to do super well if they're baking out in the sun and conversely when i lived in buffalo new york it could get down into like the negative degree fahrenheit weather so again not the best time to move so if you can plan for those more moderate times of the year spring fall depending on where you live in the country 
that will be best case scenario, but even if you can't, don't worry, we've got some tips later in the video to keep you covered. This next tip is kind of going to be personal preference, and it might even be controversial because I know some of you will love using this service, but that has to do with hiring movers. Now, during the same time that I was moving, a lot of people that I knew locally were also moving. And while I didn't hire movers, a lot of them did and had kind of not the best experiences with some of their items getting damaged or not moved as properly as they could. Now, I'm not saying that there's no great moving companies out there in the world, and additionally, I'm not saying that movers who do damage items are doing so purposely or aren't being careful. It's a super difficult job. I could never be a mover, but it is just something to take into consideration when you're moving your plants. You know what they say, if you want things done right, sometimes you just have to do it yourself. So if you are physically capable of moving all your plants yourself, I would highly recommend it just so that you're in complete control and know what's going to be happening to them throughout the entire process of the move. Finally, this last tip is going to come into play when you get into your new home, and that is try to be strategic about thinking of the conditions that you had these plants in in your last home. Thinking about the sunlight, the temperature, if they're exposed to any drafts, anything like that, and trying to find a place in your new home that has very, very similar conditions to what they were in before. It's very common for plants, if they're put into a new environment that's really different from what they were previously experiencing, to have a bit of a decline. Now, of course, plants will always acclimate to a new environment over time, but if you're trying to make this move as seamless as possible, then I would recommend that trying to put them in very similar conditions right from the start. I think I said that was the last step. It's actually a lie. My final tip that I'm gonna leave you in the general category is to just take a deep breath. I know moving a big plant collection can be super stressful, and while I don't have a ton of rare plants myself, I know it can even come down to being a situation where there's a lot of financial risk for you. I promise things will work out, and while you may have some losses in the process, Overall, largely, your collection is going to get to your new home and it's going to be okay. This next set of tips that we're going into are going to be specifically for people who are moving short distances. I would say any distance that you plan on driving in your car and can take multiple trips back and forth if need be. The first piece of advice is going to be the vehicle that you want to move them in. Now, I just use my personal car. I have a Subaru Crosstrek. So I just bought a Subaru Crosstrek. I would have bought a Lambo, but I'm not quite there yet. So, you know, it's like a medium-sized SUV. It's nothing crazy. Now, you can make any car size work for moving your plans. It's just going to depend on how many trips you want to take. I did also run a U-Haul for my furniture, and while I probably could have loaded all the plans in there for one trip, it got to the end of the day that we had the U-Haul, and I didn't want to have to make another trip with it, so I did end up just making a couple different trips in my personal car. Additionally, if you don't want to go the route of running a U-Haul and you don't have a car that's that big and maybe you don't know anybody with a car that's that big, you can also go to places like Home Depot or I think Rena Center has them and get truck rentals super, super cheap and throw all your plants in the back of the bed of the truck. Now, of course, again, it is going to come into play if your plants can handle being like whipped around in the wind while you drive along with them in the bed of an open truck, but that is another option out there for you. This leads into our tip of whether you are driving in the bed of an open truck or even if you are driving in like a closed SUV like me. You may have heard me talk about on my channel before of how I've moved plants from across town from a nursery that I'm picking them up from and in that process the leaves will get burned in the car because the sun is so 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 strong here. If you live somewhere like me and do have very strong, strong sun, you might want to consider covering up your plants in the back of your vehicle with some kind of sheet, or I know a lot of cars have those great covers that you can pull over, and this will really prevent any of those sunspots from burning into your leaves, and just overall protect them from any of the elements a little further. As for how I loaded my plants in the car, I took them and put them all inside these little boxes I had used previously within my move, so I just reused them, and I stacked them up super tight inside these boxes. Now, if you pack them really tight inside the boxes, what that's going to prevent from happening is having your pots tip over and spill dirt all over your car. And I know boxes can be super expensive, so if you're looking to do this on the cheap, something that I recommend doing is going to local small businesses or even trying your local nursery and asking them if they have any boxes or plant holders available. Way back in the day, I used to work at this t-shirt shop, and I remember when I was working there, we would throw out so, so, so many boxes every single week. It would have been a blessing if somebody came and picked them up for us. So again, don't be shy. Ask around to your local small businesses, and I'm sure in a lot of scenarios, they'll be more than happy to provide you with extra boxes that they have laying around. Now, whether you do go the route of boxing up your plants or just putting them in the back of their car without boxes, one thing that I would recommend is trying to place similar height plants together. And the reason that I say this is because if you place like super short plants and then super tall plants next to each other, what that leaves room for is for those tall plants to kind of like move all over the car as you're driving and potentially snap, break, whatever could happen to them. So instead, what I recommend is doing a load with all of your short plants, taking those, okay, great, they're out of the way, they're done. And then what I did is gradually in each load would move up and do plants that were taller and taller and taller so that 
when I was stacking these plants together in the car, they kind of had each other to brace up against if they were kind of moving or shifting throughout the course of my drive. And I had really great success with this. I actually had zero casualties throughout the entire process of my drive. And I think part of that was due to the fact that those plants did have a lot of support within the drive itself. To go off of this tip, if you're moving a combination of foliage plants and cacti and succulents, well, actually just cacti and succulents don't really matter. But if you're moving cacti and foliage plants together, just be extra careful with where you're placing them where. Even when I've transported plants just back and forth from different nurseries, I have unfortunately had scenarios where my cacti and foliage plants have hit each other in the car and it's not great for the foliage leaves. They get pricked with the cactus needles and they have holes in them and it's just not a great thing. So be careful and if you can try and keep them in two separate loads or just kind of separate them a little bit, that will be super helpful. One additional thing that I did like to do to my plants before I moved them was I did give them all a quick water. And basically what this helped do is in the scenario, if they did tip over, the soil is a little more moist. It kind of all clumps and sticks together. So instead of it just like falling out and dumping everywhere and being a super big mess, it kind of helps just keep that soil inside the pot and uh, prevents any messy cleanup that you might have later. Again, not a huge deal if you don't do this one, but personally for me, I just find it to be a helpful extra step. Finally, for moving short distances in a car, be strategic about the route that you're taking. Now, depending on where in the world that you're living, this may be applicable or may not be, but if you're taking a route to your new home that has a lot of twisting turns and potholes and the roads are just like extra bumpy and terrible, you might want to consider mapping out a route that might be a little bit longer, but overall smoother. Again, when I lived in Buffalo, New York, almost every road was ridden with lake-sized potholes. Like, no joke, you could go swimming in them. It was nuts. So, if you live somewhere like that, you know, I guess just take extra caution where you can. Okay, finally, this brings us into the process of how to move a big plant collection if you're moving across the country. And first of all, if you're moving across the country, I just have to say, congratulations. It's such an exciting thing, at least for me. It was one of the best decisions that I ever did, and hopefully you absolutely love your new home. First piece of good news I have for you if you're flying is something that was surprising to me, which is that plants are actually TSA approved and you can take them right as carry-ons. So, if you have a plant that you're particularly in love with or it's extra fragile or you just want to make sure that it arrives safely you can literally carry that plant on and it is TSA approved now just note that if you are carrying that plant on it can't be a cup of water if you're water propping it it needs to either be bare root in a soil medium or just not overall have a lot of water in it it is really important for me to note right here that overall it is TSA agents do have the final say so if they feel that your plant has too much water or they just don't like the idea of it coming on the plane they are subject to tell you that you can't take it, but I've never had a problem with this and I've brought plants on planes so, so, so many times. This next tip is one that for some reason people get really nervous about, which is that you can actually load up an entire suitcase full of plants and send it right on the plane. Now people always say to me, oh, this won't work because the cargo section on the plane isn't pressurized or it gets too cold down there. The thing that I wanna remind people is that plants ship all over the country Every day of the year, nonstop, it's always happening. And a lot of that shipping does happen on planes. So don't be afraid to put your plants down in cargo. They will survive. Be sure to add a little extra packing in there so that they can make their trip safely, but it absolutely is something that you can do. And to go off this tip, personally for me, I like to fly Southwest being that they they do give you two free bags that you can take. So you can take your stuff in one bag and you can take your plants in a whole nother bag and they're both free. Now with everything going on right now, it's questionable if you'll actually get a flight on Southwest, but fingers crossed and your plants should arrive there safely and free of charge. The next option that you have is to mail your plants. And again, this one goes back to the one of plants shipping. A lot of people don't actually realize that this is a very, very common thing. Anytime that you look at plants and you see them inside Home Depot or you see them in a store or really anywhere, 99.9% .9 of the time those plants are probably not local to that area and they had to ship from somewhere. Totally normal to ship plants and they can actually ship very, very well in a ton of different ways. So in my plant shop, in the past, I had shipped my plants bare root and this is going to be a method for you to ship your plants for the least amount of cost because you're not going to have all that heavy soil weighing down the package and they can still ship super safe. What I used to do in this scenario is tap all the soil off my roots Take the roots, wrap them up in a wet paper towel. Now, don't make it too wet, and you'll want the moisture to vary depending on what type of plant you have. So something like a calathea, more wet, something like a cacti or succulent, less wet. Once you have those roots wrapped, you can either put those roots inside a plastic bag. Personally, I used to like to use the press and seal cling wrap. That worked really good for me. Just make sure that that paper towel doesn't dry out too much. Finally, from there, I would take brown butcher paper, but you can use literally anything, wrapping paper, newspaper, anything at all, and I would just wrap up all the foliage, and from there, tape it up, make sure it was secure, and I had super, super great luck using this method. Conversely, you can ship the plants right in their pot if you're doing that, 
what I would like to do is put either a layer of paper towels, paper, plastic, something over the top of the soil so it doesn't all spill out. Again, wrap the foliage like I had previously mentioned and either put it in your suitcase, put it in a box, and you're good to go. I've had great success with both these methods, and there's a ton of videos out there that describe this process in way better detail than I just did, but shipping plants can be a really, really effective method to get those plants that you love into your new place. This next option is one that's a little obscure, and I personally haven't utilized it myself, and that's utilizing a service like Citizen Shipper. So Citizen Shipper is a company and a network of people who are willing to drive things like plants or pets or anything that's kind of can't just be like easily thrown in the mail drive it across the country to your new location. Now, again, this can be a little bit of a costly method, but if you have a huge collection, you don't want to drive it yourself, and you're kind of running out of other options, it can be something to look into. So, again, I haven't used this method myself, don't take my word for it, 100% being the great option to go with, but it definitely is an option to explore if you want to go that route. The final thing I wanted to talk about for people moving plants long distance is you can put them inside things like pods or if you're shipping your car, if you can put them right inside your car. This is actually something that I looked into when I was moving. Now, reading through the terms of service of pods and the shipping company that I went with for my car, they actually don't allow you to put live things like plants or animals for obvious reasons inside these containers. Nobody checks what's in your pods, so you likely could get away with it. Do just note the pods do take a long time to ship across the country. Your plant won't have exposure to light, additional water if it needs it, and they're not temperature controlled. So it overall really probably isn't the best method, but if it's the only option that you have, particularly for really big plants, I guess, I don't know, you do you. Anyway, that is all the tips that I have for today's video. I hope if you're moving your plant collection that this was helpful, and I hope that your move goes super, super well. I know that it can be a stressful time, but I promise it's all going to work out and I know that your plants are going to get to your new location happy and healthy. If you haven't already, give this video a like, leave me a comment about where you're moving to, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for all kinds of plant content in the future. Thanks so much for sticking around until the end and I hope to see you in the next video.